My name is Carola Arndt. I'm a pediatric hematologist oncologist at Mayo Clinic. Today we're going to talk about rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcoma is a very rare tumor. It's a tumor of soft tissue, which is seen most commonly in children and young adults. The incidence of all soft tissue sarcomas, of which rhabdomyosarcoma is one type, is only about 8.5 per million white children under the age of 15. Rhabdomyosarcoma is the most common type of soft tissue sarcoma. Nevertheless, it's very rare and soft tissue sarcoma makes up only about 6% of childhood cancer. So what are the symptoms of rhabdomyosarcoma? Well, because rhabdomyosarcoma arises from muscle, rhabdomyosarcoma can really arise any place in the body where you can find muscle tissue, be it skeletal muscle in the extremities or muscles in other parts of the body that you don't normally necessarily think about having muscle. So for example, a common site is in an arm or a leg. Since it's a muscle tumor, it can arise in an extremity. Sometimes people think it's just a bruise or a hematoma when they present with a swelling or a painful lump in an arm or a leg but when it grows or doesn't go away, it becomes obvious that maybe it's more than a bruise or a hematoma. Other areas where rhabdomyosarcoma can arise are the head and neck. It can arise in the muscles that control eye movements. It can arise in paramenangeal area, which is really in the head and neck region close to the meninges. The meninges are the membranes that cover the brain. It can arise in the middle ear or really way back in the throat or in the nose or in the sinuses. Rhabdomyosarcoma can also arise in the genitourinary tract. And actually, that's probably the most common site of rhabdomyosarcoma, the genitourinary tract. It can arise in the bladder. It can arise in the prostate in boys, but it's very different than prostate cancer that you see in adult males because this is very much a pediatric tumor. So it's the, the rhabdomyosarcoma of the prostate is a very unique entity, totally separate from prostate cancer in adults. In girls, it can arise in the cervix or the vagina or the uterus. When it arises in the genitourinary tract of boys or girls, it can present with urinary retention. So little patients, little girls, little boys can't void, can't urinate normally. It can arise, it can present with symptoms of significant constipation. They can't have normal bowel movements. Or it can present as an abdominal mass or abdominal pain. So what do we do when we see a lump that is suspicious for a tumor and how do we make the diagnosis? Well, the first thing obviously would be to image the area with usually CT scan or MRI to get a feel for where exactly the tumor is arising. Once we see where the tumor is arising, we then perform a biopsy. Sometimes it's an open biopsy. Sometimes it is a biopsy with a large bore needle to confirm the diagnosis. Once we confirm the diagnosis that it is a rhabdomyosarcoma, we then proceed to do an evaluation of the patient to determine if the tumor has spread to other organs in the body. That evaluation consists of further imaging with a scan of the lungs called a chest CT scan, a bone scan to look at other bones in the body, and evaluation of the bone marrow to make sure that the tumor hasn't spread to bone marrow. Newer imaging methods such as PET scanning are also being utilized currently and more and more hospitals are starting to use PET scans, first of all because they're extremely sensitive and can determine other parts of the body that the tumor may have spread to. In addition, we are looking at whether in fact the rapidity of response of the tumor to chemotherapy on PET scan can help us, can help guide our treatment. And that's a little bit uh, investigational yet. So once we've determined if the tumor is localized to the organ in which it originated or if it's spread to other parts of the body, 
we initiate treatment. Treatment for rhabdomyosarcoma is very multidisciplinary and has been for 30 or 40 years as long as there have been clinical trials to advance the science and the cure rate of rhabdomyosarcoma. Treatment involves both chemotherapy, surgery, and or radiation therapy. We usually give chemotherapy first and the timing of radiation or surgery varies depending on the tumor, depending on the risk group of the patient, but it's very much a team effort and very much coordination between the pediatric oncologists, the surgeons, and the radiation oncologists. Now the surgeons that are involved in treatment of rhabdomyosarcoma really depend on where the tumor originates. And because rhabdomyosarcoma can originate really any place in the body, if it originates around the eye muscles, and if surgery is indicated, one may have an ophthalmologic or an eye surgeon involved. If it originates in the extremities, arm or leg, one may have an orthopedic surgeon involved. If it originates in the abdomen or the bladder or prostate, one may have a pediatric surgeon or a pediatric urologist involved. So it's a very, very interesting tumor since it can arise in so many different parts of the body. There are a couple of different types of rhabdomyosarcoma. The most common type is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma, and the next most common type is alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. And what those refer to are really what the tumors look like under the microscope, as well as some of the underlying genetic characteristics unique to the tumor. The prognosis or outcome of rhabdomyosarcoma depends on where in the body the tumor arises, because we have high-risk sites and we have low-risk sites. For example, female genital sites are considered low-risk sites and, for example, the orbit or the eye is considered a low-risk site, whereas extremities or abdominal tumors are not low-risk sites. So the prognosis depends on the site in the body where the tumor originates. It depends on whether it's alveolar or embryonal, and it also depends on whether the tumor has spread to other parts of the body. And again, treatment is multidisciplinary no matter what the risk group is, but it will generally always involve chemotherapy and radiation and or surgery, again, depending on the site and stage of the disease. At Mayo Clinic, we are part of a national cooperative group that studies cancer in children called the Children's Oncology Group. The Children's Oncology Group is a group of approximately 250 institutions, and the goal of the Children's Oncology Group is to advance the science and the cure rate through discovery and compassionate care of children with cancer. Through the Children's Oncology Group, we have access to a number of clinical trials for rhabdomyosarcoma for low risk, for intermediate risk, and for high risk rhabdomyosarcoma. The wonderful thing that I enjoy about working at Mayo Clinic is that at Mayo, we have the opportunity to provide multidisciplinary care in one room pretty much at the same time. And by that I mean that we will coordinate the care as pediatric oncologists, but we will also have the patient seen in collaboration by the surgeon of choice or the radiation oncologist. So for example, it's very common for a patient to be seen by pediatric oncology as well as the surgical discipline as well as the radiation oncologist the same day, the same time, in the same room. So that the patient can hear what all three physicians are saying at the same time. The physicians can hear what they're saying to the patient and all of the patient's questions can be fielded at the same time. So with the multidisciplinary care that we offer in one location, we hope to be able to provide the best care to every patient every day.